Good afternoon. Welcome to the first talk of today for Art Fair PH Talks. Just a few guidelines before we begin. To ensure the smooth transmission of the talk, the audio function will be limited to the moderator and speakers. We encourage everybody to please type your questions at the Q&A box and the moderator will read out your question. But for those of you who want to ask your questions live, click the raise hand icon and we will unmute you. The Q&A session will happen at the end of the talk. I'm Tricky Lopa, one of the co-founders of Art Fair Philippines, and we just like to acknowledge our education partners for Art Fair PH Talks, the Ateneo Art Gallery, the Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and the Embassy of Spain in the Philippines. This year, we featured several art groups from outside the recognized urban art centers to exhibit at the fair. This afternoon's talk continues this regional focus, and moderating this talk is the director and chief curator of the Ateneo Art Gallery, Maria Victoria Boots Herrera. Hello, Boots. Hi, thank you, Tricky. You let um, me look forward to you. Thank you. Actually, I'm not moderating. Uh, I'm introducing our moderator for this afternoon, but I'll join them later for the Q&A. So welcome uh, on behalf of Ateneo Art Gallery. We'd like to um, um, thank again Art Fair Philippines for um, involving us uh, for the past, I think it's now our um, sixth year, no, to be an educator, education partner. As Tricky mentioned, uh, in planning for this year's Art Fair Talks program, we intended to continue providing a platform for artists outside of the Metro Manila region. The name of Leslie De Chavez immediately came to mind because of the very engaging program Project Space Pilipinas has been um, pursuing. No? It's an artist run space, which Leslie co-founded in Lukban, Quezon. For this afternoon, Leslie invited two fellow artists, Angela Silva and Rosa Cerudo, to share their respective experiences um, in engaging with, with the community through art. Um, to introduce our moderator, uh, I'd like to, to quote um, him um, just to, to give a context no, to, to his practice. And I, um, and I quote, as an artist, I believe that responding through art to our continuous victimization from the chronic conditions of our society can be truly liberating. I think this is um, very telling of, of the, the direction um, Leslie has pursued in his personal art practice and as well as his engagement with the artist community. So Leslie de Chavez was born in Manila and has been widely recognized for his incisive and sensible forays into history, cultural imperialism, religion, and co contemporary life. Responding to urgent material conditions through his deconstructions of master texts, icons, and the symbols of his times, de Chavez strikes a balance between iconoclasm and an affirmative outlook to the relevance and accountability of art to one's milieu. Leslie has heard, held several solo exhibitions in the Philippines, China, Korea, Singapore, UK, and Switzerland. He has also participated in notable exhibitions and art festivals, including the Singapore Biennale in 2013, the third Asian Art Biennale in Taiwan in 2011, the third Nanjing Triennial in China in 2008, and the first Ponchon um, Asia Biennale in South Korea in 2007. He won the Ateneo Art Awards twice in 2010 and 2014, and as I mentioned earlier, is also the director and founder of the Artist Run Initiative Project Space Filipinas in Lukban, Quezon. So thank you, Leslie, for, for working with us on this year's program. And I hand over the uh, screen to you. OK, uh, thank you, Boots. And thank you to Triki and to Art Fair Philippines. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Leslie De Chavez. Uh, I am an artist based in Quezon Province, as mentioned by Boots earlier. 
I am also the founder and director of Project Space Pilipinas, an artist-run initiative in Lukban, Quezon. So we are here today to take a look at two distinct art practices by two artists coming from the regions, namely Angela Silva from Talisay, Negros Occidental, and Rosa Cerudo from Iloilo. Both artists whose practice, I believe, revolves around the idea of introspection, one on a more personal level and the other one on a more collective way. They both exemplify a superb handling of their choice of medium and or means of engagement, whether to their inner worlds or outside their creative spaces. So this is my first time to meet Angela and we haven't met in person. And although we've exchanged a few online messages before, this will be my first time to really look at her uh, practice and talk to her about it. On the other hand, I first met Rosa Cerudo or Rosa way back during the Viva Excon in Bacolod in 2014. I had a very short chit chat with her over snack after my presentation in the said conference. And since then, I have become a follower of her several uh, remarkable art projects. And until now, I'm still dreaming of having her to do a collaboration with us in Lukban, Quezon. So let's see if we can squeeze in, in an hour, a handful of, a handful or more than a handful of ideas relating to their art practice, such as nature, found narratives, nostalgia, identity, memory, history, poetry, time, place, storytelling, process, engagement, aesthetics, movement, healing, mobility, image, communication, arts and crafts, meaning making, preservation, appreciation of tradition, the handmade, articulations and translation, transfer of traditions and rituals, construction, deconstruction, the community, diversity, participation, and many more. So, I would like to welcome you all to Forms of Intervention, Interventions in Form with Angela Silva and Rosa Cerudo. Let us all watch and listen first to Angela's presentation, then she will be followed by Rosa. Then after their presentation, we will open and start the conversation. So again, thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a conversation with Leslie and Rosa about our creative practices in the Visayas region. I'm Angela Silva, and I'm a visual artist and printmaker based in Talisay, Negros Occidental. That's between Silay Airport and Bacolod City. I'll talk briefly about how I started my art practice using printmaking and cyan type printing, and I'll take you through my brief portfolio and process on how I find images and stories and give personal meaning to them. I was born in Iloilo in 1955 and grew up in Manila and other places around the Philippines, even briefly in San Francisco in the U.S. I studied in Manila up to high school and left for the U.S. just after martial law in 1976 to finish college. I left my daughter with her shadow mother, Yaya Lisa. Reunited, we returned to the U.S. and lived there for about 40 years. I met my husband, Chris, in San Francisco. We were married in Tokyo, Japan, where we were English teachers. Our daughter, Stephanie Sihuko, is a multidisciplinary artist and an associate professor of art practice at UC Berkeley. Our son, Jake Jurisic, who's based in L.A., is a logistics administrator at the largest cannabis, now that's marijuana, distribution company in California. In 2015, Chris and I retired to Negros, where we built a home studio and a double long kitchen for him. Chris is a hobby chef and also a sketch and comic artist. I have an etching press in my home studio, and we host visiting artists and foodies for play dates, workshops, and fun dinners. Henriel Pankaliwagan is on the left, and on the right, Bacolod friends Charlie and Ann Coe, Dennis Escalon and Manio Montalibano, meeting up with Manila friends Ambi Abano and Junjun Santa Ana. Mars Bugawan and I had a printmaking play date during the pandemic. I'm a self-taught artist, and my early beginnings were image transfers, collages, and artist books. I learned by taking workshops, and I taught a few myself. In my work, I use vintage Filipiniana real photo postcards, but I wasn't happy with digital printing and how flat the prints were. Around 2010, I studied printmaking in workshops around the Bay Area. 
I also made artist books that I exhibited in group shows in Berkeley and Oakland. As a medium, I use artist books as a structural form to expand a given narrative or story across time. These are some of my early beginnings in printmaking. I had acquired an etching press, and I used photo-based processes wherever I could learn them. For example here, non-toxic photopolymer intaglio plates with chincolet. I learned to use a laser engraver and made this photo-engraved acrylic plate for Tirada, a show by the Association of Pinoy Printmakers at the CCP in 2019, to celebrate 50 years of printmaking. Printmaking is different from other mediums because I can easily make multiple editions of a work, unlike painting or sculpture. So when I retired, I began to look for other printmakers around me. For a Metrobank Foundation demo at the Negris Museum in Bacolod to high school and college art teachers, I did photo intaglio with local artists Jude Jacosalem, who silk screened chocolate syrup onto pita bread, and Roy Aguilar, who showed rubber cut printing. We repeated the same demonstrations at the Orange Project Gallery to local artists, and we called it Jamming with the Prints. More events um, happened around Print Day in May, an international event where printmakers all over the world plan to print on the first Saturday in May. So in 2018, I held a rubber cut workshop in Bacolod, a free workshop where I provided all tools and materials. I did the same print day in May the following year for a collaboration with local artists, again through free workshops. I was invited to show at the Association of Pinoy Printmakers annual show at the CCP, an interactive exhibition called Hands On. This collaboration with 17 local artists ended in a four volume variable edition artist book called An Exquisite Corpse of Prints. I returned to a studio practice when I began to explore cyanotype printing as a visual medium in 2018. Briefly, cyanotype printing predates film photography. It's a combination of two chemicals that make a light-sensitive emulsion. I expose directly under the sun and wash in water. The following year, I was invited by curator Gina Hawkson to join an all-woman group show, Not Another Mother and Child, at Orange Project Gallery in Bacolod. I made nine original cyanotype portraits of Yayas, my family's shadow mothers, and one artist book, The Album. At this point, I want to describe my head concept, hand process and technique, and heart, emotional results for myself and for others. A set of questions I ask myself, especially in response to a curated project. Many thanks to Gina, who helped me immensely with this process. The following year, I was in a two-woman show at the Negros Museum, where I added more works, the courtship cruise of my grandparents. I also applied my head, hand, heart questions to the all-woman group show Historia Context at Art Fair 2020, again curated by Gina Hoxon for the Orange Project Gallery booth. The silk banners on the top right appeared in the Fotomoto show last December. And this is how I also applied my head, hand, heart questions to the group show, Historia Context. I started to make wet cyanotypes, more expressive, accidental, and unpredictable, and in the beginning, even scary, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. But now it appeals to my right brain to let loose and be adventurous. It's my new addiction. Here are six shows from 2020 to 2021, including a wet cyanotype workshop at Art Fair 2020. After a panel hosted by the Ateneo Art Speak Online in 2020, How to Teach Art in a Pandemic, I took the challenge and did online workshops where I shipped all supplies to friendly art groups, ILCP in Dumaguete in January 2021, Roja City in February, hosted by Marika Constantino's Cantina Artist Space, and finally Bohol and Iloilo in August, hosted by Peter Fandinalgo, 
San Agustin, Iloilo, that I co-taught with printmaker Gabby Nazareno, who's based in Bohol. They've gone on to spread the inking love. Historia Namon at Salcedo Auction in 2021 was another all-woman exhibit. All About Her is an extremely personal work submitted to curator Gina Hoxon on the theme of personal stories through the pandemic isolation. I reflected on my mother's life through her passports, creating two collages and seven artist books. They fold and unfold to reveal the events in her life behind the visa stamps. I archived the extensive research I did on my website, angelasilva.com. This is International Print Day in May 2021 via Zoom. I formed a Facebook group and invited printmakers I knew to make prints that day. About 11 did, and seven of us shared our prints by Zoom that evening. We later changed this Facebook group to support the Limbang Kamai Contemporary Print Fair in October. This is the project I'm most proud of at this time, Limbaug Kamai Online Contemporary Print Fair in October 2021 featured an exhibition of fine art prints, not digital reproductions of other mediums. The partners were the Association of Pinoy Printmakers, Fundacion Sanso, Cartlino, and the special participation by distinguished speakers. It was also a successful fundraiser to build affordable and accessible desktop etching presses. With the help of new and generous collectors of fine art prints, and here's a sample of my submission, a variable edition using the same. Here's a cyanotype whiplash. Into the Blue with Omicron began with the 2021 Visayas Art Fair in November, where I joined an all-woman show with my wet cyanotypes. Cube Gallery, despite the ravages of Typhoon Odette, invited me to show my first solo and for their submission to Art Fair this year. Return to Shadow Memories and Slow Light Botanicals. I worked on these pieces even when Chris and I tested positive for COVID. I was lucky to be asymptomatic. Chris had mild symptoms. We had been double vaxxed and boosted. I can't say it enough. Be safe out there. You can visit the show Into the Blue at Cube Gallery Subu online through the Art Fair links. So what's next? A return to printmaking. This January, a few of us joined the International Open Press Print Exchange using small 3D printed etching presses making mini prints. There's Print Day in May 2022 with Cartolino and Print Exchange Plus at Fundacion Sanso, inspired by the Open Press project. Future projects include an art fair in July, maybe workshops with art groups and residencies. I do have portable presses to travel with. And now some words of thanks. My experiences with curator Gina Hoxon, Orange Project Bacolod, and now Cube Gallery Cebu have formed a high standard of professional collaborations in my practice. I can't express my gratitude enough. And before my last slide, I want to thank Leslie de Chavez and Art Fair Talks and their partners for this invitation. My husband, Chris, wants the last word. Thank you, everyone, and be safe out there. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Angela Silva. Now we go to the presentation of uh, Rosa Cerudo. So, Rosa, when you're ready. Thank you, Leslie. <clears throat> then I'll share my screen. Hello, Leslie. Let me get Rosa's slide. Okay, slideshow. 
All right, can you see now? Uh, okay. Let's go first to the first slide. All right, can you see your slides now? Yes, yes, we can see it. Hello, Leslie, and I'll share my screen. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for um, for this time. I'm sorry. There's technical problem. Um, can you see now my slides? Medyo slow yung, yung sharing. Sorry. Yung sharing. On my end, ah, I don't know kung sa kanila is okay. Uh, it is also loading on our end. Okay. Thank you so much for your patience. All right. Yeah. As much as I want to be um, in, in, in very present, uh, allow me to share with you the work that I've done engaged with communities. Um, as a young kid, I thought as being Filipino, um, I really was imagining what well, is going to be my future. That time also yung ano, um, punta ng Japayuki or punta sa ibang bansa. And I was thinking, ayun din ba yung magiging future career ko? Nisip ko, ano yung pwede kong gawin dito sa Philippines, di ba? Being Filipino, what I'm going to be proud about or being Bisaya. So I grew up in a simple community, in a simple village, but I also lived in Negros, in, in Manila, in Davao, in Palawan, and Kamigin for the longest time. And now I'm for several years now, bumalik pa sa Bisayas and based in Iliino. I always resonate with this uh, words of Ogmandino. I will love the light for it shows me the way, yet I will endure the darkness because it shows me the stars. So I realized I live in a disaster community, but I thought there's so much more to discover. When I started mountaineering and climbing different kinds of, uh, going to different places, and climbing mountains, I met the most beautiful people, the culture bearers, the indigenous communities. Doon po nabuhay uli yung aking pagka, yung aking pagkatao, yung aking pagiging Filipino, yung aking pagiging, Mahilig po ako magsaliksik no? at uh, curious about the world. No? And nung nakita ko na we're coming from this great lineage, no? na ang buhay pala natin ay isinasabuhay ang art. Nasa damit natin, nasa ating mga paligid, nasa ating mga bahay, no? architectural designs, uh, kasama po sa genius ng ating pagiging Pilipino at pagiging um, uh, yung ating, uh, sa mga islands natin, nandyan lahat. So I started to also reflect on my work. Nakita ko, dahil graduate po ako ng psychology, na yung trabaho ko ay mas magiging um, nakakatulong, no? mas magiging magamit ko siya para makatulong sa communities. So yung unang trabaho ko po ay nagkaroon ko ng chance to work with children, and abandoned children, ng American children, um, uh, caused by the U.S. military bases noong time na yon. At nagkaroon din ako ng opportunity to work with different communities using art for therapy, uh, kasama na rin po doon sa aming mga activities, sa workshops. At nakikita ko na napaka-importante ng art, lalo na sa mga bata, to develop their multiple intelligences, magkaroon ng mas malawak na imahinasyon. Palagi ko nga sinasabi sa mga bata, uh, di bali kahit maliit yung bahay natin. Ang importante, yung malawak ang ating pag-iisip and our mind and imagination as infinite as the sky. No? Mas malawak yung pag-iisip natin. So, itong uh, buhay natin sa Pilipinas being always um, in disaster, no? either environmental or political or kasama na lahat no? ng ating uh, ravaged by storms and disasters, nakita ko na 
yung kailangan natin gawin ay pwede naman pala at paano ba natin i-respond uh, yung itong ganitong disaster sa artist no nakita ko pwede naman gamitin yung art um, for hindi lang dahil kailangan natin mag-build ng schools or mag-build ng importante din yon mag-build ng toilets mag-build ng mga bahay pero nakita ko na mas importante pala yung mag-build ng sarili yung inner architecture <clears throat> na tawag kong inner rebuild no so Nakita ko ito nung nakasabay ako sa iba't ibang mga ginawang uh, collaborative work ng mga artists sa uh, post-disaster areas like sa Bohol nung nag-earthquake, sa Yolanda, kasama doon sa Tacloban, sa Cebu, tapos uh, sa Iloilo, doon sa Northern Parts. No? Kasi ang dami palang nasalantang mga ano. <clears throat> At sa Kamigin. Nakita ko yung expressive arts therapy ay napaka-importante. Kasabay ng ibang mga gagaling ng mga artists. Um, ng kasabay din ng ating mga uh, talagang selfless no ng mga artists for crisis na talagang frontliners no sa mga panahon na ito. Uh, nakita ko na malakas pala yung voice ng community katulad nito ng ginawa kong project sa mga bata. Nung tumira ako sa Mindanao, <coughs> nagkaroon ako ng <coughs> opportunity to work with <coughs> kids um, kasama ng art and culture education, ng biodiversity education, Nagkakaroon sila ng boses sa kanilang ginawang art. Katulad nito, yung ginawa namin animation, a simpleng animation. Uh, nanalo siya sa isang uh, Japan Film Festival, na <coughs> Environmental Film Festival. At yung konting ginawa nilang ano, seahorse, ano, naging, naging animated yon at naging boses nila yon sa, sa global conversation. Kasama yung aking mga collaborating artists, <coughs> mga friends ko all over, no? Uh, from different places, from all over the world. Uh, kasama na yung mga kaibigan ko sa Mindanao. Gumagawa kami ng earth camps. Kasabay, uh, we also collaborate with agencies like Department of Education, sa local communities. At yung mga local communities na nasalanta, nakakaroon din po ng opportunity to really express their own stories, memory making, memory building. Kasama na din po ng pag, uh, pagbuo ulit ng kanilang mga sarili at ng kanilang dreams and hopes. Ito po ay kasabay ng aking um, project na Monuments of the Hearts na mga tagahubangan po na noon na sananta ng isang flash flood. They were able to tell the story after 11 years and the women are able to find their strength and express their strength through this tapestry. Uh, kasabay po ng kanilang Doors of Hope. Ito po ay uh, naging installography. So we installed this and we, talk, talk, we took photography and we... Um, exhibited it in different parts of the islands. Kasama po ito ng um, thousand-year-old mangroves, sunken cemetery, at doon po sa Old Giob Church, kung saan po ay dati uh, natabunan din siya ng um, volcanic eruption. So ruins and layers of ruins and ruins and stories of disaster. Um, nilagay ko namin siya and put it together. But I think the most important part of this project Yung mga nanay, uh, the oldest would be 85 years old at yung bata would be 5 years old. So, napaka-meaningful po na nagkakaroon ng, ng agency din po yung community. So, para sa akin, the most meaningful, beautiful work of art is a result of a collaboration. Nagkakaroon din ng boses yung kalikasan, Voice for Nature. Kasama namin yung One Heart Express, kasabay po ako doon sa ating magagaling ng mga artists from UP, from Bohol, Kasing Sini. <clears throat> Kasama po yung Song of Hope. Uh, kasabay ko rin po yung mga volunteers from different parts. Uh, most importantly, yung mga Imagine Peace Korea na nag-build kami na international volunteer work camp to build houses in Bohol, to build toilets in, uh, in Leyte and Ormoc. But at the same time, we do art exchange um, as Artists for Crisis. Uh, planting seeds of hope in, in, in the hearts of children who are part of, who are actually in the disaster communities, especially uh, yung mga bata that are the most vulnerable at palaging hindi pa sila magiging, magiging center ng, ano, ng intervention. So katulad nito, uh, through the power of play and exchange no, and, and uh, building a safe space for them, itong tatlong word na to ay very important. I realize na for you to be able to uh, uh, impact the lives of these children in post-disaster, we need to build a safe space. We need to build support and rhythm in their lives. So, nakita ko na safe place heals, beauty heals, 
language heals, storytelling heals, rhythm and ritual heals, and new happy experiences heals. Yun, para sa akin, we can do this together, healing as one. Kasabay ng uh, commitment ko po to work with children, I'm so uh, privileged and honored and humbled to work with Gutita ng Cultural Center of the Philippines where we do cultural exchange and we bring children uh, with Chingay Bernardo, bring children from all over the Philippines from different indigenous communities. And we facilitate this um, cultural understanding and cultural appreciation and cultural exchange among children. Gusto gusto ko itong picture na to at ang tula ni Muhammad Ali, me and we. Mas gusto ko po yung uh, bigyan ng pansin at bigyan ng atensyon ang we. Kasi mas importante po yon Pero kailangan pala kasi muna natin natin sarili at ihanda para makapag-relate tayo sa community. At um, siguro ito rin yung aking inspirasyon. No? Isa sa mga inspirasyon ko, marami nang ginagawa sa itong uh, lugar. Yung sinasabi nilang uh, ni Jane Jacobs na neighborhood caring. Nagkaroon din ng mga blooming of power of citizens no? doon sa Japan. Yung sinasabi nilang uh, dapat yung creativity at uh, sinasama yung ating uh, yung significant role ay kasabay yung uh, lahat ng mga tao sa community, hindi lang yung creative class o yung privilege na sinasabi natin mga artists. No? Kasi sa aking experience, lahat pala pwede maging artists. Katulad nitong ginagawa natin sa women ngayon, ito yung ginagawa kong engaging with women. Uh, naniniwala ako na yung art can really provide ways to reflect, empower, critique, and even transform. No? So, Itong ginawa namin projects with Bayani Inday, kasabay ito, uh, offshoot ito ng aking professorial chair research sa University of San Agustin. Dahil katapat ko lang yung parang uh, dati police station, akala ko lang uh, police station na. Tapos yung pala merong uh, ano, uh, female dormitory, you know, a very crowded uh, jail and detention facility. So nagkaroon ako ng opportunity nung nalaman ko wala pala sa mga art workshop na pwede namang nag-umpisa siya as psychosocial intervention. At yung mga babae mismo ang gusto nilang mag-workshop. So I saw potential no, ng mga women in, after engaging with them several workshop from theater to music to lahat na po, movement, writing, poetry. Ayun. So nagkaroon ng opportunity na makilala ko pa yung mga babae doon. And hanggang nag-evolve yung Freedom in Prison Project into Bayaning Inday. Yun. So itong socially engaged practice po po, uh, requires really ethical curatorial process. No? At importante yun, uh, pinag-iisipan yun ng malalim. Uh, itong pinaka-importante yung nangyari ng COVID, uh, nagkaroon kami ng interaction. No? Kahit nasa loob sila, nakasabay ko sila. So kung ang prison man ay punitive, uh, but creative activities are very rewarding. Nakita ko na prison is intended to strip power and deliver pain, but art empowers and delivers happiness. Nakita ko po yun sa kanilang ex, um, expression po nung, uh, nung sa women in prison nung, nung double lockdown project namin ang triple lockdown nung nagka-pandemic. Uh, dahil nandun lang sila sa loob. Akala, mo, akala ko nga hindi na kayo mga kapag-workshop kasi nandun na sila sa maliit na loob. Tapos biglang sinabi nila, oh, kailan tayo uli mag-workshop? Sabi ko, kung papayagan niyo po, sumulat ako sa regional director na gamitin yung Zoom at i-open natin yung community. So ngayon, mas naging magaling kasi Ang daming sumamang uh, artists from all over the world. So real-time workshops from Alaska, creative writing with uh, Dr. Rose and um, with uh, storytelling from uh, America, from New Mexico, doon sa professor ko doon sa NYU, um, Professor Res. Nagkaroon kami ng uh, psychosocial ano rin, um, therapy from our uh, friends from Montreal, si Fran Stoner, yung aming um, Yung, yung therapist, no? nagkaroon ng, pro, ng arirang project, telling the stories of your the, the, the pains in your heart uh, with songwriter from Korea, Yun Shin Lee, and writer um, Maria Yun Shin Lim. And then Javanese Lelako and spirituality and movement with Agong Gunawan and Dr. Desinel from Java. Um, ang dami po, especially yung isang naging theater production namin with Diana Mela from New York. no, Co-directed with her and Ang mga women were presented online, real time. They were part of a conference. Uh, they were able to present themselves. They were able to talk in different conferences and share their own stories, real time, real faces nila. Kailang may mas lang po. 
um, kasama na po yung to, to also protect them and, and uh, protect their identities. Ito po yung uh, recent ex exhibition namin uh, sa UP Visayas ngayon, uh, yung uh, from Lin Ay Pahangaway, uh, women uh, artists of women, Ilonga, women artists in Panay. And ito naman po yung collaboration namin with Aniha ng Cueva doon po sa kanilang Suing Ho na project. Um, itong project na to ay talagang galing po sa puso at uh, siguro kasama na yung care and empathy no, na kasama natin, sinasabi natin kapwa. So sa akin, importante po as an artist na yung art ko ay my purpose, yung art ay nakakatulong to heal at nakakatulong din in changing lives for other people. Kung titingnan niyo po itong inverted pyramid, makita niyo yung babae sa baba. So for me, investing even for one woman is investing um, to several generations on her shoulders. Kasama po doon ang responsibilidad na nasa kanyang balikat. And so we invest on, on several generations. So kasama po ng aking engaging with prison dahil po nung nasa iligilo naman ako, ang tanong ko sa sarili ko, ano ba yung pwede kong ibalik sa community? So nakita ko po na expressive arts treatment uh, na ginagawa naman sa ibang bansa ay pwede rin sa kanila, no? yung rehabilitation through the arts na ginagawa sa Amerika, may ganun din dito sa atin na pwedeng gawin. Prison education, yung ibang university na bibigay ng schools, ng, ng degree for, for people who wants to study again. No? Tapos uh, yung iba, may prison literature. No? So nag-experiment nag po kami dito. Uh, ano pong pwede namin gawin? Gumawa rin kami ng prison, prison poetry, gumawa kami ng aming mga stories, verse, and spoken word. Theater, yun, kasabay yun. At ngayon, um, yung aming weaving, no, kasama yung hablon, uh, which is traditional in Visayas, nilagyan na rin namin siya sa women in prison, doon sa nanga, sa pototan, kasi may space sila. Um, nakita namin na ngayon, they're weaving their own ano na, no, designs, dahan-dahan. And we hope to really evolve with this too. Salamat sa aming mga donors, to our Mr. and Mrs. Lyson, sa marami pang marami pang mga donors po uh, na nagbigay ng support sa ganitong project. So naniniwala po ako doon sa care and empathy as a culture uh, sa ating sa Filipino psychology na kapwa. Tawag sa mga Hawaiians, puuhunuwa. Ito po yung sanctuary na kung may kasalanan ka, uh, doon ka bibigyan ka nila ng hindi punitive, hindi ka nila ipapanish but mamahalin, mamahalin ka nila uli. Uh, ganun din sa Australian indigenous community, no? may sinasabi silang social or emotional well-being na dapat uh, seven interconnected domains yun na bigyan ng tansin. Uh, so parang sa akin, nakikita ko rin yung sa ibang bansa, iniisip nila remedy center dapat or therapy oriented. Ganun din sa atin, sa mga Filipino, yung ating kapwa, yung ating babaylan, yung ating uh, community healing practices ay naka-anchor din doon. So ano ba yung ethical consideration ko sa pag-practice na ito? Importante po kasi na uh, isipin muna bago pumunta sa community as artist. Ito rin po yung pinag-aalalan ko ngayon sa aking research. Paano ba ako mas maging effective sa community? Naisip ko <clears throat> sa akin kasi bago ako nag-engage sa mga babae, nakipag-usap po muna ako, nakipag-consultation. Nandun na po yung ethics of care and curation. Uh, yung, yung word na curation ay galing sa word na curare, which really means to take care of uh, people in distress. No? So, doon po ako nanggagaling. Yung uh, pagiging pagmalasakit po sa mga babae na nangangailangan, uh, ano po bang pwede kong gawin na meron palang sa harap ko lang ay ilang daang babae na, na kailangan ng opportunity. No? So, kahit yung pagbuburda lang, uh, that creates a mental space. Kung wala po sila doon space uh, dahil masyadong crowded, uh, kailangan nila ng something of, you know, something to heal themselves at yun yung mental space. Yun yung nakita kong parang paano natin tulungan at uh, bigyan ng pagkakataon na yung mga women na to ay makwento yung buhay nila or magkaroon na expression. Sa akin naman, meron ding ethics of consent kasi bago pa ito nagumpisa, alam nila yung objectives alam nila yung gagawin, ano yung magiging output at yung magiging uh, process po ng gagawin. So, kailangan may consent sila at maganda rin kung permahan yun. Ethics of inclusion, voluntary po, so lahat pwedeng sumali. <clears throat> kahit anong edad mo or kahit anong kapansanan, ano po yung uh, kaso or ano pong gender, pwede pong sumali. Ethics of confidentiality for safety, ito lang po yung medyo limited dice protocol nila kasi 
um, kailangan hindi pwedeng gamitin yung personal nila na names or real names. At um, with permission naman nila kung nag-exhibit kami kung ano ba yung gusto niyang gamitin na, na, ano, na alias. Or pwede po yung initials nila. Kasi po, yung iba, dahil detention pa lang ito, yung iba po ay dapat yung safety nila, yung, yung kasama doon sa confidentiality. Tapos kasama din po yung ethics of collaboration as participatory process. Um, meron po akong maraming mga ideas kumisan, tapos kausapin po sila, ano po yung pwede nilang idagdag. So nakakaroon po ng collaboration dahil may sarili silang nilalagay na design, sarili nilang ideas din yon sarili nilang colors, sarili nilang pagbuburda yon So yun, contribution din nila. At kasabay ko rin sila ng no, pagdidesisyon no, sa iba namin gagawin, ano yung susunod namin gagawin, or pwede ba itong i-exhibit, yung ganun. Uh, marami pa pong pwedeng uh, explore sa, sa process ng collaboration. At saka yung ethics of continuity and sustainability po. Uh, seven years ko na pong ginagawa yung Women in Prison. At ito isa lang sa naging project ko sa While I'm in Visayas. Pero tinutukan ko siya kasi... Uh, sayang naman kung isang workshop lang siya. Tapos nakita ko talaga yung possibility and opportunity. At sila mismo yung sabi sa akin na pwede pa natin ituloy ito kasi maraming natutulungan. Uh, pwede pa ba natin gawa ng paraan? So I have to write proposals, raise funds, at paano ba natin ito masusustain? So yung, yung dati, ayaw namin magbenta ng mga artworks. Pero we need to think also of sustainability. Kaya binidevelop namin siya as Uh, restorative social enterprise. Uh, kasabay na din po yung pag, ano namin, pag uh, training on uh, enterprise, no? kasabay na doon. Pero hindi po ito magagawa lahat ng walang support no? from our partner organizations and institutions like University of San Agustin, uh, BJMP, uh, National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Cultural Center of the Philippines, BPIC, YC Lee, uh, Youth Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative ng US uh, mission ng Asia, Southeast Asia. Isabay natin po in cool arts. Yung funding po <clears throat> from other organizations na tumulong din sa amin. Uh, marami po kaming dapat pasalamatan sa ginawa namin project. So, siguro po, um, kung titingnan natin, um, marami pang pwedeng, pwedeng gawin. No? Um, isa lang doon siguro. Uh, I just want to check the time, Leslie, kung mayroon pa ba tayong panahon. Um, well, for me, it's okay. You can you can continue. Um, well, I, I personally, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> okay lang po ba? Kasi ayoko oh, pong... Oh, pwede pa. Sige, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay continue po. please. Oh. Sige po. So yung nagiging ano ko rin po, uh, siguro isi-shorten ko na lang po, yung reflective questions ko rin kasi na parang um, paano ba natin gawing participatory rehabilitation? Si, si Gamo... Uh, meron siyang sinuggest no sa research niya kasi natingnan ko yung project niya na ano ang galing ng kanyang ano yung inmate centered participatory rehabilitation um, must be need based and rights based no and responsive rehabilitation intervention sabi niya rehabilitation should involve the inmates from planning to implementation tapos rehabilitation should be inclusive and therefore entail the participation of the majority of inmates if not all of them. Tapos, government possesses, uh, possesses the prime responsibility of facilitating an inmate-centered program. And saka yung mga NGOs at mga, katulad natin, mga artists, critical participants in rehabilitation. So, Gamo proposes the alternative model of rehabilitation with establishments of communities of care, both inside and outside the penal system, supported by policies in place. So, yun yung isang challenge natin. Paano natin siguro ilalagay in place, no? Uh, how do we put this in place after working with these women at paano sila maproteksyonan lahat. No? No? So ito siguro yung sinasabi na yung community of care, paano po natin mapapalalim itong uh, practice na ito. No? So yun, siguro uh, medyo mahaba-haba na rin yung aking uh, kwento. <laughs> so yun, siguro itong last ko na ano, last slide ko. Parang, uh, is the artist the superstar? Is the curator the most powerful influential? Eh, hindi po. <laughs> Mas importante po yung community. So, yun, natututo pa ako while working with other communities, ano ba yung proseso na dapat at kailangan at mas um, mas bagay po doon sa kanila. So, sana po um, we support each other uh, in doing this work kasi mahirap po ang daming sacrifices 
para po malating ang ganitong seven year practice um, hard labor hard work at uh, syempre po um uh, kailangan ng uh, patience at yon uh, consistency and also yon kailangan natin ng co- collaborative network no? yon support so i'm not able to do this alone uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa mga artists na kasabay ko at mga, lalo na sa ating mga inday the Indies uh, in uh, Iloilo City District Jail Female Dormitory for this particular project. So yun, um, Leslie asked me to uh, focus more on uh, a specific, uh, yung mas bigyan ng pansin itong yung project na to with women in prison. So I hope po, uh, nakabahagi din ako ng konting panahon. Um, how do I uh, put it together in 10 minutes? So that's 10 minutes. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you so much, um, Rosa and Angela. Sobrang powerful ng presentation ng dalawa nating guests. Actually, it's, uh, ngayon ko na-realize and um, talagang hindi ako nagkamali sa pag-invite uh, dito sa dalawang uh, artists from uh, Iloilo and um, uh, Talisay. So, dun sa pinakita nilang uh, slides, makikita natin kung paano yung art really centers on the ideas you know uh, kung, yung, yung idea na art is about exploration it's about uh, discovery makikita natin na itong dalawang artist na to uh, um, ginagamit nila yung art nila for soul searching you know and then for reflection and also kung paano yung art nila mismo uh, na empower sila and at the same time ini empower din yung ibang tao so parang in a way na we weaponize nila yung art para for the good of other people so Nandun din yung idea ng uh, pag, uh, paggamit or yung art bilang tool para sa pag-build nila ng sarili nila at also yung pag-extend ng uh, voice or voices ng mga ibang tao, especially yung mga uh, nakakasalumuhan nila. So ang, ang daming um, pinanggagalingan at ang dami rin ng uh, pinapakawalan no? or parang may ang dami ng pinapalaya dun sa sa mga proseso na ginagawa nila. So, now I want to go into specifics dun sa sa process natin or sa process ninyo bilang mga artist. Na, paano nga ba? How, how do you usually start a work or a project? So, parang, uh, I'm sure ito madalas yung mga parating tinatanong din ng mga uh, kapwa artist natin. Paano nga ba tayo nagsisimula? Uh, dictated ba tayo? I know, wala naman talagang uh, standard, ano? Um, paano in terms of aesthetics, narratives, uh, commentary or context? Ano yung nauuna? Ano? I, I mean, wala naman talagang eksakto. I'm sure iba-ibang sitwasyon, iba-ibang panahon nagbabago ito. Pero ano yung usual usual na uh, prosesong pinagdadaanan? When you when you yung ideation, when you uh, come up with a work or a project. Let's hear first with Angela. Oh, hi. Um, uh, I, I referenced it earlier, sabi ko, um, I do, I ask myself a set of three questions. It's about head, concepts, and um, ideas about a response to a curatorial invitation, and what it generates with me once I start asking myself questions, what do I have, what do I know, and then I start the research. When it also um, answers a question for me, hand my techniques and my processes because mm -hmm. I think I'm multidisciplinary with printmaking and with cyanotype printing so I have to I'm limited to that but at the same time it forces me to start exploring testing experimentation mm -hmm. so there's an incubation time the last one is heart it's really what emotional responses do I have do I get when I'm starting to work on it and I'm saying uh, this is starting to get good. Um, you know, it's bringing questions out about my own reactions. Is it strong enough for me to emotionally react to? And if it meets me, then I think, how will this work for others? What do I want them to take away? So it's head, hand, heart, you know, the brain, the hand, and then uh, my heart. So. That's my process. Very in the box. In the box. <laughs> Very strategic then, I, I must say. You know? How about you, Rosa? You have any 
Meron ka bang pina-follow na structure or guidelines? You know, I mean, iba rin kasi yung practice na uh, uh, outside the studio. And then, of course, you're dealing with a lot of uh, 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 collectives uh, and communities, you know. So I'm sure nag-iiba-iba yung atake. Tama ka, Les. Uh, bleeding heart ako to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Ganun talaga eh. Uh, uh, siguro dahil sa background ko sa psychology, I work with um, special needs children from the start. I needs with abused children. I used to work with... Uh, I used to work with... Um, women and in the you know in uh, abuse women as well and that was not the start not 22 i was running a project i have to take care of uh, problematic kids and you know so it was baptism of fire um then i felt i felt meron pala akong magagawa in simpleng tao katulad ng isang babae na marami ka palang pwedeng gawin no na you think you were so helpless also as a young as a young person but really i thought um Climbing mountains and sports and theater really made my my gut you know, really strong. Um, believing in myself and also climbing mountains inside me. Mm -hmm. So I realized ko mas malami pala akong na extend na instead of doing it alone. Uh, so it's a, but first I think it's always about responsibility. But then as a young kid, I felt really I'm an old soul. <laughs> I'm thinking about serious <laughs> things. <laughs> At 16, I was bored. I need to do something. <laughs> reading reading the books na Rinpoche, mga ganyan. Ewan ko ba? Pwede, pwede na mag-enjoy lang muna kayo ng, ano, nyo, as a teenager. Pero ako, iba-iba yung may nahanap ko sa buhay. Kaya nag ako ng bundok, mga ganyan. Tapos when I, when I saw the opportunity na part ng aking work, but also I have to, you know, hindi naman kasi job description yun. You have to be very creative with the work that you do. So wala na sa job description yung kuminsan, yung hanapin mo yung mga bata or nag-iiyak na sa harap mo. Walang job description yun. You have to be there. You have to be there. So natuto ako maging available for others. Now, it's really, sabi ko nga sa'yo, baptism of fire. Tapos nung nandun din ako sa Kamigin, nakita ko yung opportunity. There are a beautiful island with you, the most beautiful biodiversity in the world. Pero walang biodiversity education na na right you know nangyayari talaga na in community level na sa schools so i ended up doing the whole schools enjoying my my island life at the same time you know and then uh naging community center na yung bahay ko <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, kasama sa proseso and then in the academe ibang level naman tatlong checklist kasi yan sa academe no mm -hmm. community engagement uh, yung yung service learning as instruction and research mm -hmm. So, bakit ako nagre-research? Importante kasi yon na yung sabi nilang research utilization, kung ano yung maging output ng research, dapat mag-impact doon sa community. Di ba? Pag may bagong knowledge, may bagong invention, may bagong ano. So, tinitingnan ko rin sa angulo na dapat i-document ng maayos para mas marami ang matututo. So, katulad nitong mga women in prison ng project namin, with their permission and with their actually, ano yun sila, Hi, ano talaga sila pagka sabi nilang nag-exhibit sila, no? Tapos, they have a chance. Nung nag-online, talaga sila mismo nagsasalita. But the good thing is, nakakarating sa ibang lugar at really moved other people and also inspired other people that these women are able to do these things, no? But dahil through research, documented ko po lahat ng, ng sin, ano nila po, yung kanilang sinasabi sa lahat nilang Inday Dolls. Documented po yan since 2014. Kailan hindi ko po yan pwedeng i-publish. Kailangan yan with, with their permission and with their ano oh, yan. No? Sana may book. May ma-publish na book about that project. <laughs> Oo oh, nga po. Eh, pero mahabang proseso po yun. Hindi po yun uh -oh. basta lapitin yung, yung mga information na yun. Pero mm -hmm. fully documented ko po lahat. Uh, lahat po ng mga sinasabi nila. Lahat po ng pangalan nila. Sino yung sumali sa, ano, from day one. Lahat po yung documented. So yeah. yun naman ang maganda sa research. Nakakakuha ka ng funding to support them. <laughs> Kasi paano ko naman po ma-advance itong advocacy? Wala po akong million. No? So sino pong gusto mag-ibigay? So, kung may million ka, mas marami kang magawa. So yun sa akin, marami akong ideas na pwede naman magamit at magkaroon ng uh, opportunity na ma-develop into, ano, yun nga, sabi ko yung maging enterprise or magkaroon ng uh, possible funding. No? So yun, isang ano ko rin yun, uh, process yun. <clears throat> yung research kasi, sa nag-umpisa ito sa University of San Agustin ng professorial chair research ko. Imbis na mag-research lang ako ng halimbawa, ng filtration device, di ba? 
Eh di, hmm. sa so Women and Prince na kasi lahat ng funding ko pupunta sa kanila. O oh, diba? Strategic yun. <laughs> Isipin mo, strategic yun. Sa kanila pupunta yung funding. So yun, isa sa mga proseso siguro. Lahat naman dumadaan ng proseso. So, yung katulad na sinabi ko, yung ethical consideration. Napakarami po ng ganong proseso. Oh. At ang dami pong iniyakan, Leslie, bago dumating sa... <laughs> Uh-huh. No, oo, sa so, totoo lang, actually, yung ganitong klase ng project is um, uh, nakakatuwa because yung engagement somehow uh, nagpapaanak din, di ba? Na mga iba pang ideas, iba pang possibilities, and then kaya dumadami yung mga gusto mong gawin, di ba? But then, nakakatuwa yung, sens- yung sensitivity na meron kayo uh, pagdating sa, let's say, paggamit ng materyales, paggamit ng narratives ng ibang tao, yung culture nila, uh, dumadating, de, dumadating din ba dun sa mga pagkakataon na ang nagdidikta ng uh, trajectory ng projects na ginagawa ninyo is an, is an encounter. For example, in Angela Silva's work, probably let's say uh, a very strong image and then from there, doon ka mag-start, mag-weave ng, ng narrative or idea Do, may ganun din bang ano, uh, pagkakataon? Opo, opo. <clears throat> yung isang ano, limbawa yung aming ginawang 4x4 na mga rug, rug portraits, no? Uh, yung mga images noon, galing yun sa kwento nila. Paano ba nagsusurvive sila doon sa loob? Ano mm-hmm. ba yung resilience ng kwento nila? Tapos kinalaborate ko doon sa, sa University of San Agustin, um, P, ano namin, uh, art, fine art students. Mm-hmm. Ininterpret nila yon sa visual no graphic no ano yung, yung kwento alam mo yung kwento yung isang mug for example mm-hmm. they share that with four women no tapos sa isa o sa umaga no? halimbawa yun yung kape very powerful image yan sa akin pasa oo oh, oh. powerful image yan tapos yung isang kwento ng ano um, sabi niya yung gusto ko yung image ko na ako yung nasa loob ng ano ng napapalibutan ako ng warm cu- cups of coffee kasi I want to remember and I want to again reconnect to that moment when I'm just having this sip of coffee and warm coffee with my family and with my loved one na nakakausap mm-hmm. nila. Very powerful image yun. An interpretation to graphic. Binalik sa kanila as grid line. Ginawa nilang um, ano, no? Nang, yung tali-tali, mga ritaso na ginawa namin portraits Mm-hmm. So bumalik sa kanila yung image. Sila rin yung nag, ng post references nila, sila rin yung nag-post, sila rin yung nag, ano, nagpakita ng kanilang gustong gawin. So may mga ganun po na kwento dahil dun sa theater namin, for example, uh, yung lahat po ng ginawa namin sa aming physical theater ng, during the pandemic po, ang prison theater namin, pwede naman namin i-share yon kasi online naman, nakamas silang lahat. Pero lahat po ng kwento doon galing sa stories nila, ng stories of compassion. Yun naman yung, din, yung in, inano namin, yung trigger ano doon ay ano ba yung nakita ninyong compassion from each other. So nung nagkwento sila, yun yung naging uh, process nung developing the physical theater. Mm-hmm. Okay. How about you, Angela? Meron ka bang ganong uh, isang work na masasabi mong parang ang naging key para simulan mo siya is, is, uh, is a particular image, something that brings memory or uh, an idea or I don't know. Well, the response um, to the curatorial invitation, no? like for example, not another mother and child, it hit me right away. Yung yaya, I don't know why, mm-hmm. no, because I had all these pictures and I had all these stories from my mom, and this one yaya would tell us stories that she knew everything that happened in the family. So all of a sudden, I started pulling them out, yayas, and holding us, and then my mom holding us. And then I could see that there was a difference in the position, the holding, the, the looking at the baby, looking at the camera. Mm-hmm. And then with uh, the cyanotype, which I was also experimenting with, which required negatives, parang I started to say, well, what if I decide to do a double exposure? Who is the mother and who is the yaya? And I start to experiment with foreground and background. And then it just kind of snowballed from there so that I was able to make a sequence because I also discovered my mother had a yaya and my each one of us five kids siblings had yayas so it was you know through generations through time through distance location and then all the way up to you know my daughter um so it's it 
that was also the start of further explorations in my subsequent exhibitions and responses. Mm -hmm. I would go back to the power of the photographs and like mm -hmm. Rosa said, the stories, very oh, personal, very family. And there were so many so that I could draw on mm -hmm. and it just kept on going. So all the way until, you know, my current work returned to shadow memories, I kept building, I kept adding uh, mm -hmm. visual stories. Mm -hmm. So in, in a nutshell, you know, that's, uh, did it start with one? No, it started with, uh, three generations of photographs. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. But yung yung ganitong uh, process na uh, I mean, dalawa kayong magkaiba ng proseso. But then every medium or every approach or creative approach has their own uh, limitations. You know, for example, this a cyanotype or etong photographic based na practice. Uh, merong limitations, eh, you know. For example, yung uh, capacity ng materials na ginagamit natin and then yung uh, usually yung klase ng uh, representation that they bring to the table you know so parang may ganong klase ng challenge how how important it is for you as creatives yung pagdeal sa ganong klase ng challenge i'm sure we, inside the studio parang it's always a problem solving and for also for 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 uh um um rosa diba? uh in terms of engaging naman diba? um for example uh how do you introduce your project to the community you know of course and then how do you uh ask for assistance let's say sa local government <laughs> i mean parating challenge yung ipapakilala mo yung project diba? so ikaw mo na angela what do you think of the no, the, the limitations um, well, cyanotype printmaking is uh, works on paper. So then there's also the size of the negatives. Um, and then I uh, limitations of, you know, sun and uh, having supplies and mm -hmm. then um, printing it. So there's a lot of trial and error. But uh, what I did too was I included other uh, mediums like artist books and they became uh, structural. So I wanted mm. to be able to show like a 2D into a 3D form that could be manipulated by the viewer. So they're turning pages, they're starting to unfold, and um, I wanted it also to be interactive. So in that sense, it also made me explore with problem solving, how mm. to do it from 2D to 3D. And then uh, after a while, it would also be going back to printmaking, you know, the community effort, um, how do I get supplies to others if I want them to join me, you yeah. know? And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was shipping out supplies mm -hmm. and then the lack of supplies in the Philippines, um, good quality, but that's so amazingly talented, the Pinoy printmakers that I've met, what yeah. they can come up with, you mm -hmm. know, with regard to material supplies and equipment. Mm -hmm. The talent is amazing. Um, yeah. And, you know, the sharing is like, they're, they want to share more. So mm -hmm. that's why my advocacy with that printmaking thing was is to extend it because it's affordable and it's mm -hmm. accessible. And, yes. you know, Rosa, I want to work with you with uh, ladies in prison, get you if um, Sana, one of the etching presses that we can develop and then have workshops. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's a group that would just like, I think would, you know, mm -hmm. to get. That, so thanks, right. Leslie, yeah. Yeah. for Angela, getting us together. We've been yeah. talking about this. We just need to peg it. Just have to like, let's do this. <laughs> yep, yep. I pandemic. Know, I know I'm going to work with you soon. It's just that because of the pandemic, everything has to, you know. But yes, um, yeah. thank you so much, Angela, for offering your heart. And I think the women will really love your kind of process as well. Daming pwedeng gawin, Leslie. Yeah. Pero limitations, yeah. Leslie, ang dami ako niyan. O, ilang ah, oras yeah. tayo. Ilang oras tayo mag-uusap. <laughs> <laughs> Pero importante siya, di ba? Sabi mo, number diba? one. Funding. Mga, funding. Uh, roadblocks. Funding. <laughs> number one, alam mo, Les, sabi nila ng mga women, ng mga inday, oh, kailan na ulit tayo mag-projects, hindi lang, hanap mo lang ang pera. Sandali lang na, sandali lang. Kasi, Les, lahat ng ginagawa nila, Les, dapat uh, may reward din ng ano nila. Hindi naman bayad sa kanila kasi hindi ko sila worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hindi sila employed no, ng project mm -hmm. pero may honorarium lahat yan tapos lahat ng materials provided so 
Imagine mo isang idea less kailangan may pera ka talaga kasi yung idea na yan pag in-execute kailangan ng pera yan. So, oh. isa yun, pero hindi naman yun dapat maging limitation. Challenge ko talaga yun, no? Uh, mm-hmm. Yung isa, yung institutional protocols, no? Hindi naman natin pwedeng gawin lang kahit ano. Uh, kailangan natin mag-consult all the time. At yeah. kahit sabi na natin napaka-free nating mga artists, we can do anything. But actually, mm-hmm. in the world, um, we're just fooling ourselves. It's not really that way. Even the stars are not walking around at night. There is this chaos in order. Wow. We have to we, we have to we have to um put ourselves in the right place and we have to know where we are supposed to be you know able to um I think more more impactful and effective in the work that we do if kailangan pa nila doon si sige si tutuloy ko pero pag sinabi na lang ayaw na namin mag ano sa iyo mama whatever ayaw na namin sa iyo Rosa edi eh, wag na nating ituloy kasi palagi kong tinatanong from day one itutuloy ba natin ito? Oh. Sabi nila sa akin, nako, busy ba? Siyempre, gusto namin. Oh. Mag-exhibit ba tayo? Eh, siyempre, gusto namin mag-exhibit. Uh, no? mm-hmm. So, yun. Um, yun palagi kong ano rin. Um, hanggang kailan natin ito gagawin? At siyempre, isang limitation less kung meron lang, no? Uh, nakakasabay na mag-manage ito. Kasi yan ba, gagawin siyang enterprise. Hindi siya pwedeng gawin correct. negosyo, eh. Uh, correct. Hindi, eh. Kasi hindi, wala tayong worker. Hindi sila, uh, hindi sila sweatshop, no? So yun, kahit na mag-deal with uh, designers or maraming nagpapakomission kumisa na ano, we have to be very careful kasi hindi naman sila pwedeng gamitin lang yung patches or ng ano, tapos iba branding nila. Hindi pwede yung ganun. Unethical okay. actually yun, yung gamitin mo, tapos gamitin mo sa branding Pero, mo. Ito nga parati yung challenge din minsan, di ba? How do you extend yung ganung klase ng understanding at ethics, you know, to the people or partners na pwedeng maging uh, I mean uh, concerned people na pwedeng maging partners dun sa sa collaboration, 'di ba? So, uh-huh. lagi kong sinasabi na you, you you're trying to uh, uh, introduce art to the uh, local government for example or to the private institution is one thing, you know, but making them understand that this is important not only for you but also for the community is another thing. <laughs> diba? So, parang merong parating gap, you know. So I think uh, yeah, tama 'yung sinasabi mo na sana merong pagpapatuloy, you know, continuity. So I think na uh, kailangan na magkaroon sa siguro ng uh, participation on the uh, uh, art and cultural level whether it's national or sa local na na um, uh, level natin. So again, gusto ko 'yung sinabi ni Angela kanina no sa limitations were in uh, para mo para in a way parang yung kanyang uh, 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 solution to to solve this is uh, i-extend or i-share yung knowledge kasi sa, habang dumadami yung natututo ng printmaking dumadami rin lumalawak din yung ano yung yung yung, uh, yung uh, klase ng creativity and uh, production na nagagawa nila ano yung works na nagagawa nila so um, uh, i think we will be, i have one more question before tayo mag-accept ng mga questions from our uh, okay. audience So aside from yung capacity natin to create and make, you know, educate, you know, and inspire, ano pa ba yung mga uh, what what drives you to continue making this or making art? <laughs> oh, ano 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 yung nagpapatuloy pa, di ba? Sa inyo. What fuels? Oh, Angela first, yeah. Okay, um like two things no there's still one more uh, strong project i'm still developing incubating but i think in the i guess in the grant system or the exhibition system here in the philippines in manila it's um, i have to apply for it for funding or i would have to have a body of work so that i could submit a proposal so then i have to figure out who could possibly how to mount this you know it's like one last driving uh, head hand heart concept in me that just you know i want to do i want to do so badly then at the same time there's this printmaking advocacy where i'm finding that you know the more i get a welcome response yeah let's do it then the more i get energized so like i said you know 2022 i'd like to get those etching presses uh, finalized produced and then distributed And there's already, you know, a short list. So um, I hope to go soon and help test it. 
But meanwhile, then I have to balance that between yeah. printmaking, but then this personal project, because I tend to work with deadlines. And if there's kind of no deadline, I kind of will just like, you know, let it go uh, because mm -hmm. there's something else that's urgent. But I do have mm -hmm. to pay attention to what this thing I want to make, you know, yeah. what I want to share, I want to mm -hmm. say, I can't lose track of it, you know, so um, time management, uh, deadlines, internal deadlines, I don't know, you know, anything. Maybe if I talk about it enough, people will remind me, oh, what was that thing you said you were going to do? Then, <laughs> you know, go for it. Yeah. How about you, uh, Rosa? Alam mo, less tao lang naman tayo kung minsan dumarating sa buhay natin yung pagod na pagod na tayo at tapos ma ma yung meron pang ganong mga nega kung minsan. No? Um, alam mo, isipin mo talaga habang nandito ka sa mundo, di ba? Ano yung parang, ano talaga magkakaroon ng meaning sa buhay mo? So, sa akin, na-define ko kasi na parang mas maganda yung ginagawa mo para sa iba. May service yung merong na-expand yeah. ko yung sarili ko, yung isang tao na sa babae ko ay nagkaroon ng nag-expansion, ano? nag na multiply ko siya. Pero alam mo, pag nakita ko pa yung gawa ng mga women, grabe, lipad ka talaga. Umiiyak na ako kumisa, sabi ko sa kanila. Sobrang, ano, sobrang powerful ng kanilang mga ginagawa. So, mas lalo ako na-inspire. Na tip of the iceberg pa lang ko eh. Ang dami pa talagang pwedeng explore na tapos ang dami pang communities nangihingi ng tulong. Ross, gawin natin dito. Gawin sa Davao, <laughs> gawin sa Manila, gawin Diyos ko po. <laughs> gawin dito sa kung saan-saan. Mm -hmm. Ang daming nangihingi ng ganong ano. Maraming gustong um, bigyan ng ganong opportunity. So, oh. so kita mo, no? we, paano natin? We, we really need to promote din, di ba? Kasi parang uh, makikita natin na yung ganitong klase ng practice is really appropriate sa context natin, di ba? yung community uh, uh, engage na uh, collaboration uh, community in a sense na uh, artistic community as well as yung uh, community na kinabibilangan natin so that kind of sensitivity de ba so uh, for example uh, Angela's very sensitive yung sa community niya ng printmakers de ba uh, same goes for us uh, sa sa lokban uh, uh, sa local artist community namin but then also yung uh, uh, pag-extend nung uh, mga program sa mas bigger na artistic community. So, um, do, we, do we have any questions na para sa ating dalawang guests? Ms. Boots? Yeah. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Yes. Uh, thank you, Angela and Rosa, for that very um, inspiring presentations. No, I have some questions, pero unahin na natin itong ano. Um, I'm wondering why most of our... Um, most of the questions come from anonymous attendees. Sana i-share nila kung sino sila. Anyway, um, I think the first question has already been answered. How does your practice help you become more compassionate with yourself? Uh, is there anything you would like to add? Because I think you've, you've already shown that in your presentations. No? Um, okay, for, for Angela, um, what makes cyanotype printing special to you, especially when using it to make your art? What's your advice to students who want to try out this type of printmaking? Mm -hmm. The person is a fan of your works. Thank you. Um, first of all, let me clear up that cyanotype printing is a form of alternative photography. It's mm -hmm. not printmaking. printmaking so yeah. um, it's very, you know, it's a separate medium. And what I discovered about cyanotype was that I can use the photographs that I love and I can manipulate them, but I don't have to make them as photographically accurate as photography is. You know, it can be very exact with light and exposure. With cyanotype printing, I wanted to use it more emotionally, evocatively. And by blue, cyanic blue, uh, cyan blue applied to black and white photos, I'm asking you take another look. And um, I use it as an emotional pull. I, you know, my tagline, uh, blue is the color of the ocean of distance and longing. It's really held up to all my work. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, this question is for Leslie. Uh, is it possible for you to give a glimpse of the project that you want to do with Rosa? Will it involve in dolls? I'm wondering if there is already um, a discussion 
ongoing? Yeah, I've, I've been, well, how many years na in-invite si, si Rosa? I, I really want to bring Inday Dolls sa, sa Lukban. Actually, I had a, a project in 2018. Uh, dealing, um, it's a collaboration with also with uh, uh, persons um, uh, deprived of liberty. But during dun sa project na ginawa ko, uh, it's more of an exchange actually of um, uh, parang ang idea is I borrowed their shadows, yung silhouette nila, you know. So it's uh, by putting them against uh, the light, uh, mm-hmm. nagkakast sila ng shadow and then yun yung dinocument ko. But I, I, I think uh, masyadong uh, um, uh, parang one-sided lang yung nangyari, naganap. Ano? So parang I, I I just uh, happened to have this idea, pero yung actually pagpapalalim of of uh, of the the process that uh, underwent dun sa, sa 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 project is something na kailangan din i address. So I think yung Inday dolls, uh, yung talagang mayroong uh, uh, engagement and then may process na pinagdaanan at saka I think iba yung magiging uh, impact niya. So, I'm, yun yung isa sa mga iniisip ko na projects na sana na dalhin sa Lukban. And I'm also looking at collaborating yung mga NGOs na uh, uh, women uh, yung kanilang uh, center ng kanilang uh, 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 project at saka uh, advocacy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yun yung <laughs> gusto kong dalhin. Uh, kaya, interesado kong ma- ma-invite si, si Rosa sa Lukban. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, another question for both. Um, maybe Leslie, you'd like to to also share you know, your answer to this. How has your art changed during the pandemic compared to how it was before? And what new things, techniques, avenues have you discovered about your art and life as a creative in this adversity? But you can also read the uh, click on the Q and A para mabasa niyo ulit, no? Okay. So maybe um, Angela, you'd like to, to start. Uh, actually, the the strongest works that I did was um, impacted or or really began out of the pandemic isolation because all of a sudden I had only these uh, documents, pictures, stories. Uh, to tell because I had done genealogy research on the, the family stories that I was starting to record. It was a lot. So the pandemic was actually, you know, as soon as I dealt with my paranoia, my fear, mortality, all that, all of a sudden it was like, so what do I leave behind uh, as a legacy? What, you know, what I only started exhibiting um, and I wanted to do more. So I was really grateful for a couple of invitations. I think I will be exploring it just a little bit more because it's hard also to find something universal in the personal. And um, I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, maybe, you know, uh, other projects. Um, so I see that, you know, going back again to the other side of my brain, printmaking uh, could be easier to do because of a community and because of less of the personal in it it'll be very objective. Um, the cyanotype portraits uh, and stories that I tell is very personal. I think I might just, you know, pull back just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Akinaman Boots, mm-hmm. um, alam mo yung engaging with the community when you do workshop on Zoom, and then mm-hmm. you tell them, How okay, it? <laughs> make a circle, held your hands. <laughs> <laughs> pero, pero, you know, the other side of it also, we found another way of doing something with the space. No? Mm-hmm. Tapos minsan nagde-design workshop po kami na sa telepono, o oh, nakikita mo ba sa baba? Tapos sa ano, yung, <laughs> kasi talaga pong kuminsan sira yung internet or yung nag-gagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagag
when you don't have to travel anymore, mm, mas nagiging actually, productive yeah. din po mm, pala kayo. Mm. So, yun yung isa sa ano, the add-ons, the, the, the yes. good thing. No, na. Opo. O, parang maganda nga nag, nag, nabigyan tayo ng alternative ano, no, uh, platforms. Mm-hmm. Kaya kahit na okay na yung, yung ano, hindi na tayo masyadong gipit sa, sa restrictions, we still uh, approach um, a hybrid no, format okay. for programmings like this. So, mm-hmm. Let's see, Kao, sa, uh, sa project space, PSP. Yeah, no? I think uh, nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, parang all of a sudden, you start to reflect on your own art practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then yung relevance niya in a bigger picture, let's yeah. say, in sa community mo or sa community ng mga artists. You know? So parang you tend to nag streamline ka bigla i mean ano na ba yung essential you know ano na yung meaning ng mga pinaggagawa natin mm-hmm. so i think uh, what happened to me is uh, well nag continue pa rin yung aking um, uh, desire to extend yung uh, important uh, narratives that concerns our people but also uh, tinry ko nga yung mas i-balance din yung uh, advocacy namin sa project space Pilipinas. so uh, I think ang advantage namin sa Project Space Pilipinas, since it's an artist-run space, uh, pwede kami mag-navigate ng iba't ibang klase ng advocacy na nag attend kung sa ano yung sa tingin ko is very important during the time. So for example, uh, itong ang sa amin uh, 2022, um, yung design namin ng uh, programming is uh, dedicated to women and cultural, uh, women artists and cultural workers. So, uh, parang isang bagay na hindi pwedeng or hindi karakaraka pwedeng gawin ng mga ibang commercial galleries o kaya mga institutions eh, na mag-focus lang sa isang klase ng, ng uh, uh, direction. But then, I think I, 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 I want to, to highlight din yung uh, iba rin kasi yung sensibility. Ito makikita natin sa mga pinresent kanina ni, ni Angela at saka ni, ni Rosa. Iba yung sensibility ng women artists. And I think kailangan i-amplify kasi may mga bagay na hindi kayang i-approach ng mga <laughs> male artists uh, uh, na I think uh, importante na makita natin yung, yung, yung kanilang pamamaraan and mm-hmm. i-amplify natin and i-promote natin and makita natin yung possibilities and potential which is really wide and, and very strong then especially sa panahon na ito, mm-hmm. di ba? So yon yun yung ano uh, nag, mas nagbago sa akin mas uh, mas mas uh, mas uh, nagiging engage pa ako sa community at sa mga fellow artists ko especially ito mga artists mga kaibigan na nasa regions. Mhm. Kaka boots, meron pa akong yes. uh, naisip lang na idagdag. Mm-mm. Yung na decentralized din yung mm, ano actually yung, yep. decentralization ng ating ano na palaging itong galeria or museum or ano pa yan oh. na Mm-hmm. Ano yung cities na major cities lang nangyayari. Ngayon yung mga ano nagkaroon ng bosses no from the different mm-hmm. grassroots mm-hmm. community dahil mm-hmm. sa sa online din ano. So okay. I think itong pandemic maraming uh, ano uh, talagang nabigay na dialogues then in between uh, all the others, others no. Oo. <laughs> uh, actually kami sa atin ay art gallery yun yung isang direction talaga na na tinuloy namin no like Angela and Leslie you were part of our um parang artist talks last year no or during the start of the pandemic so um sana nga ano hindi na parang yun na nga parang gusto ko na magkaroon ng ganito pa rin eh kasi it it is economically ano efficient, efficient. and at the same time kasi syempre budget pinag-uusapan pero at the same time we reach more audiences no so let me go through and dami na eh Dumami na bigla ang questions. Teka muna, okay. Uh, may comment lang, no? An anonymous attendee, uh, Rosa, I was crying through your entire presentation, really. Um, wow. I, I feel for this for this um, attendee, no? Uh, for some, uh, masasabi ko lang na paka-powerful ng mga messages ng work nyo um, for someone like me struggling, a young artist. So thank you to Miss Rosa and Angela for this wonderful panel. Um, one question, a very short but um, I think um, interesting question. What project that has made the biggest impact uh, on you? Mm. Rosa, ikaw. Parang ang dami, no? Hirap mangyari. <laughs> 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 ang dami po talaga, grabe. 
Uh, siguro, kung kung siguro isa um not necessarily yun lang pero what would um yung yung alam mo yung isang unang may isip, umiyak yung oh. isang babae noon sa women no na si Inday mm-hmm. na na yung poetry niya, naakala niya, eh, poetry lang naman yun, nandiyan na sa papel na ano, no? Tapos ginawang film nung, nung USA Little mm. Theater kasi nag-collaborate kami. Kasi oh. nung aming project nung ano, barter, no? Nag-barter kami. Ang binarter oh. nila, poetry. So yung ibang mm. artist, ginawa siyang film, musical video, ganun. Nakita niyo yung film niya? Ay, yung kanyang tula, naging film. Siyempre, iyak na iyak siya, no? Sabi niya, kakala ko, wala namang kwenta yung poem ko. Tapos, naging film Galing. pala. Yan, no? for, for them to feel really important, oh proud na yung hindi po hindi po poem lang yun napakaganda nung ginawa mong sinulat mo mm-hmm. so very proud pa ako da isang ano namin yung prison poetry nila na na-express nila in poetry yung kanilang ano tsaka spoken word yun impactful din yun yung aming isang project na yun yung spoken word ng Mother's Day ba yun o oh, sige sulat tayo sa mga nanay natin ako naging <laughs> sobrang <laughs> ang laki ng impact sa amin lahat so yun mga little things like that pero sobrang impact Ikaw, Angela. Uh, getting into the personal, uh, that work all about her, which I thought was made out of my heart, deepest uh, homage and uh, respects to my mother, mm-hmm. uh, turned out to be very personal and also painful. Mm-hmm. So the, when I talk about impact, I'm also talking about the reactions when you do go deep into something very personal and you do share it and uh, it, the pain it can cause is something i have to live with that i'm not sure i would do it again but i know that by doing it i i kind of really grew um mm-hmm. and uh, yeah that was the most impactful to see that i guess work when it's strong can really have an emotional reaction that I did not expect. But what I, how I responded to it was say, I did it in solitary isolation in my studio. But once I release it, it's out there to be received. And I have no responsibility for that reception because I thought I was being true and authentic. And um, it makes me think, you know, twice, mm-hmm. but it won't, didn't stop, it doesn't stop me. So, that's the one project that whoa i have to live with yeah. i have to live with boots Leslie, just one yes, note uh-huh. um, i think i have to share this story ng isang inmate na i mean uh, in the, you know, sabi niya sa akin uh, because she harmed herself inside the mm. of depression and mm-hmm. she said kung hindi dahil sa project mo ma'am uh, baka wala na akong naisip na yung purpose to live again so Merong ganong or meron palang ganong impact. Kahit simple lang ginagawa nating project. So sa akin malaking impact 'yan. Yeah. Salamat. O gusto ko ngayong sinabi mo kanina, creating mental space Opo. to heal, yeah. no? That that's very important. And mm-hmm. I think we sometimes forget that art has that power, no? Mm-hmm. Leslie Kao for, uh, for that yung, question. Yung, yung yeah, sinabi ni ni uh, Rosa is Na, 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 yun na yung meaning making eh, no? mm, hindi lang siya mm. nagdudwell dun sa artwork mo but also nagre-reflect na siya sa reaction ng tao yeah. para naman sa, sa case ko I think isa sa pinaka I don't know if it's uh, yung isang bagay na 15 years ago 15 years na namin ginagawa eh, which is Project Space Pilipinas and uh, ngayon pa lang uh, ito lang medyo mas recently in the past few years na mas nakikita ko na talaga yung uh, uh, impact namin do sa lo- mm-hmm. local community and then uh, nakikita ko na rin na parang nag- nagma-manifest na yung uh, um, uh, impact namin kasi nagkakaroon na rin talaga ng interest dun sa mga pro- projects na ginagawa namin and uh, programs na ginagawa, ginagawa namin to the point that yung aming mga kapitbahay, yung locals would tell us how lucky they are for having the <laughs> opportunity to encounter yung contemporary mm-hmm. art, you know? So, mm-hmm. as you can see, sobrang diverse nung art forms, articulations na dinadala namin sa Lukban. Uh, and then, hindi, parang kumbaga, yung, yung, yung programming is really centers on the uh, pag, pag-convey ng ideas and messages or articulations ng artists na beyond dun sa idea na artists, you know, 
um, you can make a living out of art. Mm-hmm. Of course, you can make a living out of art, but we hardly talk about you know making money out of art. Yeah. <laughs> so, mas in encourage namin yung ganong klase ng thinking, kasi mas mm-hmm. magiging meaningful yun at saka impactful in the next few years, so in the near future. So, dahil don, yun yun nagfuel para sa amin para ituloy yung ginagawa namin. So we're not just creating a space for artists, but we're actually creating a space uh, to to develop at saka contribute dun sa uh, intellect ng community. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I think it's that's the that's the uh, most impactful work that I've been doing. So 15 years uh, na pala ng PSP. 15 na. years. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank And you. more to to come. Okay, yes. um A question from Farah Manuel. Um, kudos to both Ms. Rosa and Ms. Silva for their successful advocacies. What do you think are important considerations for social enterprises to be sustained in the Philippines, not just a one-time event? This was also uh, actually a question from Triki Lopa uh, to Rosa. It was um, the, Her question is, how do you fund your, your projects? Indirectly, you... you mentioned um, different groups no pero yung yung sinabi nga ni Leslie na sustainability tsaka continuity no um, siguro idadagdag ko ano yung kasi ngayon malaki yung usapin sa creative industries Industry, no yes. paano ba ma, ma, malalagay yon sa yung tamang frame mabibigyan ng tamang framework yeah. mm-hmm. kasi yung creative industries it's all about you know pesos they 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 compute how much has this um, creative uh, practices or sectors contributed to the economy but it's beyond the, oh. the numbers nakakalungkot so, ano parang nire-reduce yes exactly so, yun, uh, that's true you know parang ano? itong mga ganito ang dapat nilang pakinggan kasi yung multiplier exactly. effect mm-hmm. no uh, very significant so yes the question is how um ano nang asa na nga ba tayo? What do you think are important considerations for social enterprises to be sustained in the Philippines? Rosa? Importante pong tanong ito. Ito yung tinatanong ko sa sarili ko. Kasi ilang, ilang taon na po akong nagkakaroon ng dilemma po na paano ko ba ito i-move i- forward. Kasi nung nakuha ako sa BPIC nag nung inter, ano, boot camp, uh, hindi po talaga. Sabi sa akin ni Dr. Morato, bleeding heart ka lang talaga. Ilam mo yung kailangan mo talagang magkaroon ng profit. Kaya ayusin mo yan. So, learning process po talaga sa amin na challenge po yon Maganda naman yung sinabi sa amin ng sa Bayan Academy si Dr. Morato. Sinabi niya na kailangan pag-isipan nyo paano nga maging sustainable. Alam mo, may magandang system na ginawa rin sa mga women. Lahat ng kita nila, meron silang community fund. So, yung community fund nila, pupunta sa kanila lahat yon So, pwede kasi gawa ng paraan na, halimbawa, magkaroon ng sales, no? Ang sa amin po kasi sa ngayon po, lahat ng sales po, bumabalik lang sa kanila din. Mm-hmm. Yun ang binabalik sa kanila, honorarium, sa materials. Kung meron po, kasi palagi naman pong uh, kulang yung funding. Kasi palaging nagsusobra, no? Na-excited po kasi kaming gumawa. So, palaging sobra yung... <laughs> palaging sobra. Yung, I mean, palaging, yung production. Oh, yung production. <laughs> Tapos pag binilang ko na yung, yung kailangan naming nagastos, ayun, sobra na, deficit na. So, kailangan, maganda rin po yung system na meron po talaga silang klarong ano yung sa kanilang profit margin ay mapupunta mm-hmm. doon sa kanilang community fund. No, yun, mm-hmm. maganda mm-hmm. po yung practice na yun. Tapos, bawat isa po sa kanila, kung ano po yung nakumikinita na nila, may, may binibigay po silang community fund na 4%. No? Napag-usapan po nila yan na ganun. Mayroon silang ganun sa kanila. Aside from that, pwede naman kasing ano yan uh, sa isang project. Katulad sa akin, very vulnerable po kasi ang pera dahil hindi po ito yung naging Uh, unang purpose ng project ko po. Na, naging ano na lang ito ngayon, naging issue na lang dahil nga kailangan namin uh, maging sustainable. Mm-hmm. Pero, um, ilang beses na po ako nag-ano nag, rin po, nag, I have to weigh options po. Nang sinabi nilang, can we get, make projects with you ng ibang designers? Eh, hindi po ako pwedeng maging middleman doon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hindi po sila pwedeng i-hire. Mm-hmm. Yun, very, ano yun ha? Yeah. Very, very serious consideration uh-huh. yun. Tempting, no? Pero, <laughs> ano eh. I, and I'm glad you brought that up kasi yung, yung ethical, as what you mentioned, yes. no? yung mm-hmm. ethical practice um, so, ang hirap po talaga. considered. Tapos uh, ngayon po sa ibang bansa, anibawa sa ng mga friends ko, hindi po pwede magbenta talaga ng ano, affected mm-hmm. by law po to, to sell anything from the prison or any, ano, mm-hmm. kasi yung shop na idea noon. Di ba yung madami kasi marami po kasi ibang bansa na ginagawa yan. So, huwag na natin i-mention. Alam nyo na yon the big... <laughs> 
So, yung mga ginagawa nilang ganong sweatshop, no? So, uh, kailangan din ayusin yun, ano? So, yun. Um, ang dami namin consideration sa ganyan ngayon dahil lang una talaga, hindi ko hindi ko talaga uh, main agenda ang kumita yung, yung ano. But, the women are telling me kasi po, nagpapa- alam niyo po ba na kaya, kaya ako bleeding heart nung nalaman ko sila pa yung nagpapaaral ng mga anak nila sa loob. They'll do anything sa loob. Mag, mag-manicure, mag-massage, maghugas, maglaba para may income kasi sila pa yung nagpapaaral ng mga anak nila. So nung nalaman ko, oh my God, breadwinners pa itong mga babaeng ito. So we have to do something to make them earn. So the project makes them earn pero wala silang pressure to sell kasi everything mm, is mm, paid mm. by the project. Right, <laughs> so, right. Lahat ng ginawa nila paid by the project. So wala kaming pressure because we don't have an, we don't have a, a boss or we, we don't have to Walang kota. Walang kota na ito. <laughs> Sorry, Leslie. Oo. I mean, dahil, I mean, dahil uh, supported yung project, hindi Oo, compromise Oo. yung creativity ng mga participants. Diba? Pero I guess yung question is, paano ka makakasiguro na may continued support? Ano? Nga po. Oo, okay, okay lang. Uh, pero somehow, you, you, you've been able to manage. I, I'm sure it may mga difficult ano, periods. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, Angela, would you like to chime in to sa, ano, um, the question about how to sustain social enterprises like this? Um, if I'll, initiated. If I'll uh, stick to printmaking, mm. I've been fortunate to find matching um, venues, outlets, organizations willing to recognize that printmaking is a medium, that a fine art medium that can actually also generate sales for the individual printmakers. So my job has been to just try and connect them together. So by also organizing and making uh, exhibitions happen, sales and uh, demonstrations and workshops. workshops. That's mm-hmm. yeah, that's one thing. And then mm-hmm. if there's income from sales mm-hmm. and workshops uh, on a personal basis or sales of my own work, that's where I also fund my advocacies. You know, mm-hmm. by sending out free supplies, traveling to to teach uh, or do workshops. So that's because you know i want to stay involved and active also mm-hmm. in my mm-hmm. own social practice so yeah, yeah it's networking mm-hmm. yeah leslie ikaw so, sig- experience as a psp um well it's always uh, <laughs> a challenge in sustainability you know? so parang uh parang katulad din ng ni, ni, ni rosa parang later on mo na lang marirealize ay kailangan namin mag-survive so we need to really mm-hmm. rethink you know but mm-hmm. Dahil naka-focus ka dun sa advocacy mo, dun sa in- intention mo to to really uh, push for the more meaningful na resulta ng ano, sometimes nakakalimutan mo na kailangan pa rin namin pala mag-survive. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, it's part of being an artist is being creative on how you can, you know, create something, uh, some alternative for you to sustain the project. So you could you could do um, um, workshops, okay? O kaya ay... Uh, Meron din, minsan, sales sa exhibition. So mga exhibitions namin, nakakabenta kami pa minsan-minsan. Pero hindi pa rin talaga kami doon uh, nag-center or nag, uh, nag, uh, uh, nakapokus. Uh, I remember nung si Angela offered yung possibility ng uh, press na grant. Naisip ko talaga, sabi ko, wow, this is, it's going to be a really interesting uh, um, workshop kung gagawin namin sa Lukban. Because ang unang-una kung gustong maging beneficiary ng workshop ng printmaking, which is I think very appropriate sa local level. So yung mga local artists would have the chance to learn a new technique and then have the possibility of selling works na mas affordable. Mm-hmm. You know? So parang I think very interesting yung ganong klase ng ano. So yung ganitong klase ng sharing ng knowledge between communities, between advocacies, at saka between artists is really important sa pag-sustain. Hindi lang nung uh, individual advocacies natin at saka mga projects natin, but also the community as, I mean, the art industry as a whole. Um, but siguro kung yes. mayroon lang kong idagdag ng konti, I've seen some really good practices around the world no, na, mm-hmm. na how, how they can sustain a creative industry ng ganito. Since sa akin, kasi, uh, hindi, hindi kasi pwedeng, uh, unless they will develop a particular um, yung group of women who can really manage no, financial management, mm-hmm. uh, really, you know, uh, yung kanilang online na selling and all that stuff, no? Isang level yon, But they mm. come and go kasi po. Pati mm. personnel, they come and go, no? Yun yung mga limitations. But 
I saw a very good practice like Creative Growth Art Center in California uh, dealing with um, ano to, no mga, yay! Dealing with mga adult uh, with disabilities and special mm-hmm. needs. No? Mm-hmm. They're really good. They have their own gallery next to it. They have yeah. their own platform. <laughs> They, they they specialize on even they go to biennales and to um even go to the Venice Biennale mga ganun. so may level sila ng curatorial work at the same time malaking funding Manchuria. din from uh-huh. the government uh-huh. and malaking funding from them. so Pero, may ganito magagandang practice that we can learn from how they really support their ano meron silang ito talaga dream project to na ano na may may workshop may sobrang laking workshop and they can do anything they want so Wow, if you have ceramics there, if you have a uh, sculpture, we have ganun uh-huh. ano. Sa Palesley, ang ang kung saan kami nagwo-workshop, this is one small area where they eat, they sleep, and they everything is happening there. Nice. Walang space. Mm-hmm. So yon, isa yon. Uh, masyadong kuminsan nakikita nila. It's just in Facebook that it looks wow, glamorous. Yeah. Ang totoong air, ang totoong process po ay nakakaiyak. So, marami pong proseso ang pagdadaanan. Salamat po. Salamat. Um, sorry, mar- marami pang questions na pumasok. Um, kaya lang we need to wrap up. No? Siguro, um, I, I'm just looking for one question that probably would be a good closing dun sa ano, um, parang Miss Universe question to eh. Uh, <laughs> sandali ha. Um, okay. Um, I, I guess since um, yung yung choice ni Leslie in, in forming this panel had to do with, with um, focusing on women artists and art practitioners. No? Mm-hmm. So uh, let's take this question um, from, anonym, from another anonymous attendee. I noticed both of your works and practices centers on the women and it's beautiful how you give them a platform for um, in a way audiences get to meet them also. How has this affect your you personally as a woman and as a creative mm-hmm. um it's very empowering uh-uh. i think we go back to our own spirituality um mm-hmm. if i live my purpose by the end of the day you ask yourself <laughs> <Ito na. laughs> did you make the most out of your life darling <laughs> so being simple <laughs> Um, yes, Angela. Aside, aside from being a woman, I'm also an OWA, an older woman artist. Mm, and I know okay. stage that's very, my life. Uh, uh, oh, it's a, it's a you stage started of later, ages, no? Oh, oh, ageism and gender mm-hmm. and all that. But I do have at least maybe stories to tell. So mm-hmm. in that sense, you know, I have a lot of, of strong stories that I want to share. So that's content for me in heart. Thank you. Thank you for that. And Leslie, um, yeah, I, siguro yak, the question for you is why focus this year no? yeah. uh, mm-hmm. on, on women artists and creatives? Yeah. To tell you honestly, most of the artists that I admire are women artists. Mm. You know, Doris Salcedo, uh, Hague Yu Yang, Melati Surya Dormo, and of course these two ladies here. And then Brenda Pajardo, you know, and dami. And then lately, napapansin ko, I don't know if you noticed this, pero parang dumadami, nagli-level up. Yung, mm-hmm. Nagkakaroon ng balance with the number yeah. of practicing women artists. So I think it's about time to really give, at least contribute to giving an opportunity to hear their voices mm-hmm. and see their works, you know. And uh, I don't know, I'm... I, I've always admired women. Uh, my mom, when I got married, my wife, my kids, my friends, you know, and dami ng kayang gawin ng mga kababaihan na talagang sasaludo ka talaga. And pag naging artist pa sila, it's another level. Mm-hmm. And pag naging successful sila, successful in terms of, you know, capacity nila to translate their ideas and the, being there to really work hard despite all the challenges that they have, it's mm-hmm. really admiring so i think it's very important also to really give them ano um you know hands down talaga <laughs> Sige. so th- thank you for that um thank you angela and rosa for for uh, sharing your stories and leslie thank you for inviting these two um, powerhouse women really yes. um, <laughs> i think it's a, a very um 
again a start of a new conversation no maybe we can continue on um mm -hmm. and uh, i'd like to call on uh, tricky lopa to join us for um a group photo yeah hello first of all thank you boots for thinking of leslie thank you so yeah. much leslie for bringing angela wow. <laughs> powerhouse monday I'm <laughs> Ang galing galing, nakaka-inspire para you started our week right. And I'm sure mm. everybody in the audience feels the same way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Angela talked about her cyanotypes. Would like to remind the audience, it's actually, you can actually view them at Cube Gallery's web mm. pages in Art Fair Philippines. Mm -hmm. At saka yung isa mo pang gusto, Leslie, si Brenda Fajardo, my works rin sa Tin Ao. Yeah. And, oh. uh -huh. yeah, so a lot of women artists in the Art Fair this year. So, yeah. right. so thank you again. And just to like to know uh, to pose for a group photo. Sorry, it has to be via Zoom. Uh, Danny or Therese, just give the count. We just have to smile when they say one, two, three. Hi, good okay. afternoon. So please give us your biggest smile. Three, two, one, smile. One more. Three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stay Thank on you. for a while until they and on. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Rasa, Miss Boots, Tricky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Les, Angela, Ross, and Boots. Thank you. Okay. Um, that was a wonderful way to begin our talk uh, talk series for today. And we'd like to thank our educational partners. Ateneo Art Gallery, Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and the Embassy of Spain in the Philippines. At four o'clock, there's another talk, this time with a few of our project's artists. Um, so please tune in to Daily at the Fair, our Daily at the Fair page in the Art Fair website, so you can register and book a place for the talks. You can also um, focus your gadget on the QR code here on screen, and it will lead you directly to the registration page for this next talk. We hope to see everybody here again later and for the rest of the week until April 1. Thank you.